Don in London, hello, January the 18th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from, either addi from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, simply alcohol because I was too frightened to try anything else, I, sus I suspect. And my behaviour, trying to be perfect and never so. And uh, Sunday, around about 9.30, no, nearly, nearly 10 o'clock, and uh, I've been busy, busy tidying up, doing uh, little household chores. Why? Because I need to settle down and get my mind in some sort of place of calm. And what helps me most is doing these videos very often and also sharing ex experience, strength and hope on how to uh, deal with addiction, get into recovery and stay there on a daily basis. And the, the, uh, the help I get normally and most often comes from the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I use the preamble in my videos just to share what AA is about. And it calms me down and gets me into this one moment of now, rather than my head going backwards into my history or going forwards into what next. Actually, what next will be an AA meeting around about 11 o'clock, hopefully. But um, this is the AA preamble, which is said at the beginning of every meeting, and it's like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I also went to an AA meeting last night, uh, one at uh, the Response Bookshop, which is opposite the entrance to the Brompton Cemetery, which is a very big, very old cemetery in uh, West London. And the uh, Response Bookshop was uh, one of the places that I went in early recovery, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, because they had meetings around about five or six or seven. And it was a good place to keep on meeting the same people over and over again, the same people in recovery one day at a time. And it seemed like some were just starting off just as I was a few years back. And some have been in the fellowship for many, many years, in fact decades. So the gift is when we go to meetings, and I don't think there's any replacement for them. We get the experience, strength and hope and the wisdom shared from decades down to days. And often it's the newcomer who reminds us most about what it is to be drinking again and how awful that can be. And when I can't get to meetings, I use literature, the daily reflections, daily readings which help me, and as Bill sees it, I guess you've all seen this if you've seen the video before, and also the big blue book of AA, and uh, it's, it's like, it's not a Bible, but it actually has all the experience, strength and hope which was shared in the early days of the fellowship over 70 years ago. And AA is a, an organic organisation in some ways. It's, well, in fact, it's not an organisation, it's a fellowship. I need to remind myself it's just a fellowship of people, human beings with human doings, and being themselves as best they can on a daily basis. And the gift is, as we start to get honest, open, honest and willing to change, which is the very nature of the programme, 12 steps of change, of attitude and behaviour, then we're on to a different way of life. And I think that's featured in the readings this morning. So, daily, daily reflections for January the 18th. Would a drink help? By going back into our own drinking histories, we could show that years before we realised it, we, re realised it, we were out of control. That our drinking even then was no mere habit. That it was indeed the beginning of fatal progression. I had no blink blinking clue. When I was still drinking, I couldn't respond to any of life's situations the way other, more healthy people could. The smallest incident triggered a state of mind that I believed I had to drink to numb, that, to numb my feelings. But the numbing did not improve the situation, so I sought further escape in the bottle. Today I must be aware of my alcoholism. I cannot afford to believe that I have gained control of my drinking, or again, I will drink. I will think I have gained control of my life. Such a feeling of control is fatal to my recovery. And, you know, the, the whole thing of step one, step one of the uh, pro program, and there are 12 little steps on this little card here. And step one just says, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable. 
And you know, I never knew that I was actually habitually taking a drink to take the edge off when I was really drinking heavily because everybody else around me was doing exactly the same thing. And why were they? That's because I was making choices in my friends as time went by. And many, many people do drink to excess. Some do it with impunity, it seems, but in my, in my opinion, once we start to take the edge off with a drink, rather than, uh, in, I suppose, make us sharper in some way, understanding what is going on around us, then we're on, on a steady road of decline, and somehow it, it takes away the very essence of life. And the gift for me, really, in being sober today, is how to deal with life as it turns up and or, or how I turn up and how other people in my life turn up. And it's been a sad week with um, uh, not news of the loss of a friend of a friend, an ex-partner of mine, <coughs> who got uh, the flu. And uh, they, were, they were quite strong, strong in saying they were all right. But uh, they were found dead after two days. And, you know, things like that just sort of impact as well. And if you've been listening to my videos over the last week, I'm also back to singular status. That is, um, my relationship with a very good woman is over. And, you know, I woke up this morning feeling alone. It's a very strange feeling, that aloneness, the, the gap inside, which is empty. And it's often a place of depression. And the, uh, the truth of it is we go through denial, f uh, anger, frustration, depression and acceptance around uh, people in our lives who disappear for whatever reason and it is a, it's almost the gift of unhappiness some people talk about uh, striving to be happy uh, be happy or learn how to be happy actually we have to learn how to be happy or unhappy and actually how to work through our feelings around issues to do with people places and things and I think I have a gift really which is simply I don't drink on a daily basis which makes it more obvious what is going on with my feelings and my feelings this week have been disturbed up and down and that's okay because I'm learning how to deal with being single again and before I was in this relationship I've been single for a number of years and life was very sweet and okay and I felt fine now having had a relationship it, life doesn't feel so fine today because it's how we share with others and if we have a uh, a very intimate relationship where we can share and then it's gone then of course we need grief and uh, the process is difficult and we need to iterate or go over to a few, a few hundred thousand times sometimes in my case to accept where things are today but you know those several hundred thousand times can go like nanoseconds I'm just learning again what it's like to be on my own and uh, in the partnership sense but in the sense of never being on my own in fellowship at least I have got somewhere to go and share with my friends how I'm feeling. And expression is key. Expressing what is going on for us, the truth of now, is absolutely integral to making life work. And I'm rambling a bit, but I'll go on to As Bill Sees It. And I'm starting this book from page the first, first page yet again. I've gone through it once in, in the last year or so. It says, Personality Change. It has often been said of AA that we are interested only in alcoholism. That, that is not true. We have to get over drinking in order to stay alive. But anyone who knows the alcoholic personality by first-hand contact knows that the true alky ever, never stops drinking permanently without undergoing a profound personality change. We thought conditions drove us to drink, and we, when we tried to correct these conditions and found that we couldn't do so, to our entire satisfaction, our drinking went out of hand and we became alcoholics. It never occurred to us that we needed to change ourselves to meet conditions, whatever they were. And the gift for me these days is that um, I'm understanding the changing conditions of my life. And sometimes I've been in relationships and sometimes I've not been in relationships. And it's what we get used to and how we respond and react to what is going on around us. So for me these days, I need to ask myself in the morning, how am I feeling? Why? What can I do? I feel lonely, and that's okay. I shall go to a meeting of AA and see family later. At the same time, I need to remind myself always that I'm powerless over alcohol, people, places, things, but I have my, my choices. And finally, that uh, if I understand what I cannot change and change what I can, I get the wisdom to know the difference. <coughs> 